What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about painting. To date, it is one of my most viewed videos on my YouTube channel. I get lots of questions, lots of DM about it. So today, we're gonna to show you exactly every single thing you need to complete a painting job by yourself at home. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm gonna be painting my motorcycle fairings, but the same process would apply to anything you wanna paint, a car, a bumper, a fender, a hood, it doesn't matter what it is, the same process applies to every single thing. The most important step in painting is your prep work. You need to be patient, it's tedious, I hate it myself, but I know to get a good paint job requires excellent preparation. Don't skim out on that or you'll pay for it at the end of the work. Right here, I have some ferns set out. I have some more ferns over there. Obviously, before you begin anything, you wanna make sure you wash this properly. You want it to be silky clean, no dirt, no oil, no grease, because that will definitely ruin your paint job. So you wanna wash everything as clean as possible. When washing, you don't wanna use any heavy chemicals. A thing like dish soap always works. You can use Dawn dish soap, very, very good stuff. I use that when I do my washing. I wash all of that. You don't want any car product that has wax in it that will ruin your paint job. So just something that will get in nice and clean. Now, after washing, you want to sand. Depending on the color you're painting and what exactly you intend to do, 320 is always a good starting point, depending on how deep you want to go and if there are damages that needs to be fixed. If there is no damages and you simply just want to throw some paint, 600 is a good starting point. You sand with 600 and you're good to go. Personally, I like to use this glass cleaner to clean and prep all my surfaces. It is not entirely ideal, but it is what I use and it's always worked good for me. Second, if I'm painting any plastic pieces, I always use adhesion promoter. Everyone has their own ideas on whether this works or it doesn't, but this will save you a whole lot of issues. I'm sure you drive around, you've seen vehicles with paint chipping and cracked bumpers and like paint cracking. That's probably why it wasn't prepped well and they did not throw in any adhesion promoter. Throw this stuff on guys, it would save you a lot of headache. This basically ensures that that paint or that primary sticks to that bumper and it won't come off in the future. Now, if you have damages that needs to be repaired, you need to get yourself a can of this. They sell it in lesser quantities, but this is a good size. Now this is Bondo, so you need to have lots of experience before you start jumping onto something like this, and then you can use that to fix it. Obviously, another thing you need is gonna be your paint. I have three different paints here. Uh, for the paint scheme, I'm gonna intend to use on this bike, so you need all your paints. Another thing you're gonna need is gonna be your reducer. When I buy my paints, I buy it full. It's not thinned out or anything. I like to reduce it myself so I know exactly what's going into it. So that's what that's for. So with most paints, you're gonna reduce it one to one, and that's exactly why I have this. So this paint is full paint, and then you're gonna put it in a mixing cup and then reduce it one to one. But before you can do any of this I just mentioned, most importantly, you need your primer. So this is u Paul primer. This is very, very good stuff. And you don't wanna chip out in your primer because that's your base. That's the foundation of all your paint work. If you have a bad primer, you're more than likely gonna have a bad paint job. So you want that primer to lay down and be flush and smooth as glass, and then you will have a better chance of getting a better paint job. So with your primer down and your base coat, which is the color you're gonna be painting it, what you need is a clear coat. So I always recommend to go with a 2K clear coat. It's a two part, so a clear coat and a hardener. That would give you a best, the best durable finish and the best durable sheen, nice gloss, and it doesn't wear off very easily. Now you're going to need some paint guns. You do not need multiple paint guns if you're going to paint. All you need is one good gun. This is the best gun I currently have. It's not as as expensive as the two thousand dollar guns that some of the professional guys use very good quality i've i've knocked out some very good paint jobs with this gun and i keep using it this is my primer gun as you can tell it's already pretty much worn out this is the gun i use for primer but i want to do some touch-ups this is my touch-up gun right here but this gun is for clear coats and for base coats. Now, if you're gonna be doing lots of painting and you wanna cut down time, you're gonna to need to get yourself a sander. They're pretty inexpensive, $30, $40. You can find them on sale. You purchase a sander and it would cut down your prep time to more than half. I personally use this Hyper Touch gun. Not the greatest, but not bad. $30 from Walmart, I picked it up and it's been working great. So right now, this is all the supplies you're gonna to need to paint. You don't need that, but you could get it if you wanted to. <laughs> But yeah, this is everything you're going to need to paint. You need some sand, some sanding papers, some cleaner of your choice, adhesion promoter, bondo if you need to do some repairs. You need your paint, of course, paint gun, clear coat, reducer of your choice, primer, 
and some obviously a sander. No, it's a lot of talking, but this is the steps to get this done. Pieces over here have been sanded. They're yet to be cleaned. Going over here, these pieces have been sanded. They're clean. These are ready to receive paint. If you look at it, it all has that nice uh, matte satin finish that you would expect uh, from a properly sanded finish. Some of these, all of these pieces are not going to get any primer because there's no damage to it. And the paint is going to cover all of this very well. Now for, for a part like this that has some damage that I'm going to be repairing, this will get primer because without primer, that paint is not going to cover that repair properly. So this is all the paint and supply that we're going to be using. Um, over here is the paint. I already have it poured in the mixing cup. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. There's a lot of metallic. Actually, first we're gonna reduce it so we can get the right consistency and then I'm gonna show you exactly how good this paint looks. Now I forgot to show this before, but the mixing cup would have a bunch of numbers on it and it's pretty much like your high school chemistry. You're just gonna go by what it says on the paint can. If it says mix four to one, it shows you, you're gonna scroll move over, you're gonna see it. Like I mentioned, you have a whole bunch of numbers over here. For this particular paint, it's one to one. So you fill it up up to number four, for example, over here. And on the other side, you go up to number four and that's, you know, you have a good mixture right there. So there's a whole bunch of number. Another common one is four to one to one. So you have four for, let's say the clear clothes, you have another one for the hardener and another one for the reducer. That's the same process. Wait, in each column, basically, you want to fill it up to the same number. So you want to fill it up in twos and twos and twos or in threes and threes and threes, whatever the case may be. Okay, guys, so just like I mentioned before, I have a damaged piece over here. I have a damaged piece over here. It's a front nose fairing that's completely cracked, as you can see. Uh, this is the piece that goes in there. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this up and get it ready for some paint because I don't intend to buy a new fairing just because of this. So. That's, uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So obviously the first thing that's going to happen is that we need to fit this piece back in this area over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, as you can see, this is fully seated. It's flush all around. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and do some plastic welding underneath to completely secure it. Then we can begin uh, fine tuning this uh, area over here. All right, guys, so this is the area that's damaged over here. So I'm gonna flip it around and uh, weld on the inside. Alright guys, and there you have it, as you can see, this is perfect. So on the inside, this is what it looks like. You can see all the repair that was done over there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these uh, studs that are sticking out. And then we're gonna fix it on the inside and on the outside too, because we want the best possible finish and best possible result. We want this to be better than OEM very much. So let's jump to it. Okay guys, as you can see, it's all cleaned up. Now, it is very okay to leave it like this at this point and begin uh, fixing the damage up front, but I'm gonna do something else. So in the front over here, I'm gonna go through it with uh, this pointed tool, I forget what it's called, just to make a ridge so that the uh, epoxy I'm gonna be using to fix this is gonna settle in there and make it a better repair. So this is what I'm referring to, as you can see, I'm just making a nice ridge so that epoxy can settle in there and make it firmer when it completely cures. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the remaining and uh, we can start doing some body work after the epoxy cures. And there you have it. This is looking exactly the way I want it to be. So now you're just going to get some kind of pad for yourself, doesn't matter what it is. But this is the epoxy we're gonna be using. It's a JB Weld plastic bonder. You want to get this one specifically. You don't want any of the other many variants that they carry. This is made for plastic and this would give you the best result. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and put some put equal parts of this on here and mix it up and then start applying it in this groove that I've made. Alright guys, so after about half an hour while this is still curing, it's good to go with a razor blade and just uh, trim it down a little bit. You don't want too much of a ridge so it's easier for you when you're sanding and doing that body work. So just about 20 to half an hour, just go with a razor blade, smooth it out a little bit. You want it to be as flat as the panel itself. Uh, you don't want anything sticking out too much. It's just going to make the body work process way quicker and way easier. All right guys, so after cleaning it up, this is what it looks like right now. As you can see, I've gone through with a razor blade. It's nice and smooth, much, much better than mine was all, you know, filled up with that other epoxy. All these areas over here with a kind of grayish tinge to it, that is where the epoxy have settled into and we have cleaned it all up. So this is perfect. This is what you want uh, when you're doing a repair like this because it makes that sanding process way easier. This way, we can go over with some bundle, sand it once or a couple more times, and we're good to throw some primer on it. All right, guys, so there you have it. This is what a sanded piece should look like. I know I've mentioned this before. Over here where the white is showing through, it's just because of the super low quality adhesive that was used. So I had to bring that all the way down to plastic to get it all off. Same over here. So I have this one more piece to sand. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Uh, it's very simple. It's almost like washing a plate. You just need to keep sanding until it's smooth as possible and then uh, You're good to go All right guys right now. I have the repaired part over here. It's fully cured So I'm gonna go ahead and get some sanding done one that's nice and smooth before we do some add some bundle to the surface sanded this again i have the tape so i don't go too far and right now it's a smooth to the touch so i don't even believe we're gonna need bundle for this everything is smooth there's no grooves this was one of the best repairs that i've ever done really so it's all good over here which is what you want you don't be able to feel any grooves if your nail is getting caught on something that will show through the paint so this is all good right now so i'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some high build primer and then sand it one more time and we should be remember we should be ready for base coats When painting and you have to put tape down to paint, you want to always uh, curl it over in itself. You don't want to just lay it flat so you don't have paint lines because that's usually a pain to sand out. This way is the best way to do it. So when you sand, there's going to be no tape line and it makes that sanding process much easier. So this is already, I'm just going to clean this up with some alcohol, throw it in the booth and then we're going to lay some primer down. All right, guys, now we have some paint on the gun. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some good coverage on the white parts first before I start uh, painting the whole thing.
Okay guys, now I'm trying on some clear coats. 